Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Core Shop and we are here at Needlework Market and I'm here with Diane of Silver Creek Samplers. Hi! Hi, how are you doing Kimberly? Good, I'm so excited to be here and she has nine new market releases which is so many new releases and I know that's what you guys really care about. So we're going to jump right in and I'm going to have her talk about all of her designs. So let's see the new designs. Okay, so we'll start here on the left. The first one we have is called Camper Sampler, and it's all done in rhyme, and it's all these fun things about um, a bonfire, because who doesn't love sitting around a bonfire? Um, it, it, do you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay, so it says, crisp, cool air, moonlit night, warm bonfire, stars so bright, dancing flames, ancient lore, embers glowing, make a s'more. And actually, the stars and the moon were stitched in glow-in-the-dark DMC floss. Oh, so, okay. um, you know, I mean, you can't really tell in here, but... Right. Um, so that was just a fun design. I have a lot of good memories camping with my son and the scouts and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, And there's also, I found out, there's a bonfire day, bonfire night over in the UK. Okay. So this would also appeal to all of the stitchers okay. across the pond as well. Yeah, and I've never used the DMC glow in the dark. Is it hard to use? Well, actually, this was done by one of my, as I call them, cross tubes. Okay. My model That's stitchers. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she was actually, um, Lori Curtis stitched camper sampler for me. Um, and I mean, she actually made the suggestion, and I said, yes, let's do, let's it. do it. So um, I haven't tested it out in the dark yet, so I'm under the assumption it really does glow in the dark. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Okay, so next we have just, it's just a fun little um, kind of play on words. Uh, we have Independent Ants Day. And um, this was actually my first time stitching with silks. I had never stitched with silks before. So I used Trainway uh, silks on that one. And the conversion is given for DMC if people want to use DMC as well. Um, I don't usually do a lot of like fancier finishing, but this one I just thought, oh, it'd be so fun to give it a real summery feel with the watermelon fabric and the, uh, the yellow gingham. Um, and I just think it's funny too, because you know, like these guys are doing all the hard work and then this dude is back here chowing down on watermelon. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay. So next we have hand in hand and this is one that I feel, um, a lot of my pieces, either they're fun or they're inspirational. Um, but sometimes I feel like there's just a message that I need to get out there. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this was something that needed to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it says, in life we all will stumble and find it hard to stand, make the journey easier by walking hand in hand. And then I just have a whole bunch of different uh, male, female, different races, di different ethnicities that are represented. We have a gentleman here in the wheelchair. Um, I also will be providing on my website a female wheelchair user that okay. can easily be swapped out. Um, I had a stitcher email me and ask if there was going to be a female version and I thought, of course there should be. The charts had already been printed. Oh, okay. But I will point people onto the website um, okay. where they can um, get the this you know it'll just be like this part it won't be the whole um, right the whole chart. chart so that's called hand in hand so the next one is um oh, hilarious <laughs> it's one that i have found um found that many stitches relate to because it seems like you know the demographics right. from overall for stitchers pretty much are we're talking 40s 50s yeah. and you know, we all love our 80s music. And so yes, can recall most 1980s lyrics, but still can't remember the reason I came in this room. How many times we've all done that? And it's just a fun um, 1980s colors with a bright neon. You know, I can still remember the neon ankle socks I used to wear mm -hmm. back in the 80s. Um, so yeah, that was, that was super fun to do. And that one would be really easy um, because it looks like you've got three colors and the hair, you could just change the yes. floss really easily to make it customizable. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times when I design uh, people, when there's people in my designs, I make them a redhead because, well, you know, I'm redhead. But yes, um, all, of, all of the colors can be easily, easily interchanged. And that one was done in all DMC. Um, okay, so next 
We have Rainbow Crossing. Um, this was one that I wrote the words back when I lost one of my hounds. Mm -hmm. um, she passed away tragically um, back in 2019. And I wrote that as you know, just part of my grief process. Right. I wrote it down in my design journal thinking, well, maybe someday right. I can do a, a pet memorial or something. And last year I had one of my model stitchers, um, she lost her, her cat, Oreo. And I knew that Oreo, like all of our pets, right. you know, mean the world to us. And I thought, you know what? I think it's time. There's been enough time for my heart to mm -hmm. heal. I think it's time to bring that to life. So, um, and originally I was going to have a dog pictured in it because it was you right. know, inspired by the passing of my dog. But then I thought people have cats, people have birds, people have pet pigs, people mm -hmm. have all kinds of pets. So I just made it very generic with just a little paw print here in the middle, just to kind of be an overall representation of mm -hmm. pets everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that one says, the time has come, I can't deny, to let your gentle spirit fly. We'll meet again, it's not the end. Wait by the bridge for me, old friend. So, and that one also was stitched all in DMC. Okay. The next one is, is actually kind of very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's called Day of Jubilee. The little town that I grew up in and still live in, Montrose, Pennsylvania, was well known to be a place of, for, uh, there were a lot of abolitionists okay. in the area during the um, Civil War era, um, with the slavery, um, and there were a lot of, a lot of abolitionists in my hometown. And as I, I was thinking about Harriet Tubman and, and her whole heroic story, um, back in 1849 was when she actually escaped slavery. Um, and then she had escaped into Pennsylvania, which of course is my home state. Mm -hmm. She didn't escape to Montrose, Pennsylvania, but Pennsylvania nonetheless. Close enough. Yes. So that's what the 1849 is represent, represented as. And this building in the background, some may think it's a schoolhouse. It's actually not. It's an AME Zion church that is located in Montrose, Pennsylvania. And the land was deeded, the whole story is on the back of the pattern, but the land was deeded originally to a freed slave. And then the land was then turned over to the church and they built a church on it. And that was where many of the people of color in the area of the time worshiped. Um, so I wanted to portray just this sense of jubilation. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, I mean, she's just, you know, jumping in the air because of now she's free. Um, and so that's kind of a tribute to, to Harriet Tubman. So the next one, um, so many of them I say are near and dear to my heart, but really <laughs> this one, this one also is, um, this one is called Wings of Change. And of course it depicts a monarch butterfly and a, a milkweed blossom and the different um, different stages of a monarch caterpillar. When I was when I was a young child, um, <laughs> when I was young, um, I collected. I went out into the fields and I got the monarch caterpillars and I would bring them home and put them in jars and watch them grow okay. and spin their chrysalis and then come out and you know we release the butterflies. When my son was young, we did the same thing. And I went through a very rough, uh, a rough time in my life. And it just seemed like, oh, you know, it, is this bad stuff ever gonna stop? Mm -hmm. It just kept coming at me, coming at me. And so I, I wrote the words, you know, I thought of the butterfly, how, you know, it starts out as this little tiny caterpillar, but, and then it goes into darkness for a while in the chrysalis. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes out, it's something totally different. It's transformed. So the butterfly is proof that you in darkness can be transformed too. And it was just a message of hope um, that we all have to go through dark times. Mm -hmm. And sometimes dark times don't always, you don't always come out a butterfly, right. but somehow inside you're changed for the, for the better. Mm -hmm. So um, this also was stitched uh, by Lori Curtis, um, who is also a monarch butterfly aficionado. Okay. So she had a lot of fun stitching that. Um, the next one is, uh, I, 
I call it seize the needle. It's a fun play on um, the Latin phrase carpe diem. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, well, if people want to seize the day, why couldn't they seize the needle? <laughs> so it's it's just a, a, a little, um, of course it says, you know, carpe acus, and then underneath it's the translation of seize the needle. And then there's a little um, place on the back where you can uh, personalize it with the year and the letters and the, the numbers are also provided in the chart. And it's just this little pouch that opens up. You could use it to hold needles or scissors or even your orts. And then it just folds back up and snaps closed. And the complete finishing directions are included with this too. Um, this was my first foray into a specialty type finishing. Okay. I had never had to cut apart anything I had stitched because mm -hmm. you have one chance to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> but I was very pleased with how it turned out. This was also stitched with Trinway silks. I'll have to try this. Yeah, yeah. She's got a really nice line, really nice line. Um, and then last but not least, we have my uh, book, Prolific Pun Cushions, which uh, is, was kind of done, well, what not kinda, it was done as a celebration of 15 years of my designing. Um, so it includes 10 different patterns um, and they're all name puns. Um, and then they have just fun little mm -hmm. pictures also depicted on it. They're all stitched with DMC. And there's also finishing instructions in, included in the back of the book with step-by-step -step photos. And I tried to make it as clear as possible. Uh, as I wrote the directions, I actually ran it by my husband, who he has basic sewing knowledge. Right. But I thought if it makes sense to him and he can follow it, mm -hmm. then but anyone can follow it. Yeah. So um, there's, like I said, 10 patterns. The, the patterns are shown in color or black and white. Mm -hmm. They're shown both because I know some people prefer mm -hmm. to stitch from a color chart as opposed to the black and white. And they're really big. So like the top part is color and the bottom part is black and white. So it's like really big and easy to see. Yes, that's one thing I always try with my charts to make sure that the the charts are big enough so that you're not having to look underneath your you know 40X magnifiers to, <laughs> to see what the symbols are because I know that's personally, that's a pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so those are all of the, um, the new we have Harry Trotter. So then we have Adam Zappel. Um, for all of our uh, readers out there, we have Paige Turner, Ray Coons. Um, we have Olive, all of you more. So then we have, of course, Earl E. Bird. If someone is uh, watching now and you're a vegetarian, you might want to turn your head on this one because we have Chris P. Bacon. We have Pauler Bayer. Um, a nice summary one, also following through with the watermelon theme of Independence Day. We have Walter Mellon and we have Noah Zark. So those are the 10 designs and prolific pun cushions. So out of all of this, what is your favorite? Oh, it's like asking me to pick my favorite child. <laughs> my favorite out of all of this would probably be Hand in Hand. That would be my favorite. Um, I like the um the the wide variety of ethnicities presented and i like the fact that they're all joined together mm -hmm. holding hands um and it just reminds it reminds me that sometimes we do stumble but if we stick together then we've got someone to to help pull us up what can you tell before market which one's going to be your bestseller you know, I try not to play that game. Okay. Um, and since I, t I take pre-orders, so that kind of gives me a, a kind okay. of a glimpse as to what maybe I could expect. Um, so I, I do have a very strong suspicion of what's gonna be my bestseller. Do you wanna tell us? Um, I have every reason to believe that Rainbow Crossing okay. is going to be, um, I, I would not, not to sound um, you know, haughty or right. braggy, but I have every reason to believe it's probably going to sell out. Oh, okay. At, yeah. the, at the market. Here, here at market. Yes. And how many days have you been here so far? Um, my husband and I arrived yesterday. 
Um, we actually decided this year um, to arrive a day early because since I've been coming to market in 2017, we would come in on Thursday and we okay. drive, which is a, it's a two day drive from Northeast Pennsylvania. And after last year, um, it's, it was just a struggle to have everything ready and set up, mm -hmm. getting, not getting here until you know, three in the afternoon mm -hmm. on Thursday and then being ready for early bird on tomorrow. Friday afternoon, yeah, tomorrow. So can you tell everybody what is early bird? How does that work? Um, okay, sure. Okay, so early bird is actually, it's the opening night of, of, uh, of market, of Nashville Need to Work Market. And in the past, it used to start at 6 p.m. And then they decided, I guess enough shops were like, oh, we, we need more time to shop. Well, you know, if they need more time to shop, it means we have more time to sell. <laughs> so now early bird starts at 4 p.m. and goes until 8 p.m. on Friday nights. And, um, it, you know, it just gives the shops kind of a head start. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times shops who have pre-ordered they come in to get their pre-orders because they know, okay, this this is what I'm getting here, and then they can move through. Um, because the math has been done, mm -hmm. and shops really only have about eight and a half minutes per exhibitor. Mm -hmm. So they've got to really be mm -hmm. Johnny on the spot and, and keep moving. So yeah, early bird is fun. You know, there's always a lot of buzz. Mm -hmm. You know, people are ready. Some rooms, you know, they're lined up. Lines. Yeah, down. Um, I don't know if I've ever had the the honor of having a line outside my door, but it's usually it's just as a nice steady, steady. stream. Yeah. yeah, which is good. And what's your favorite part of coming? My favorite part of coming, of course, yeah, the sales are are very important. But even above the sales, it's my one chance in the year where I get to talk to shop people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not just an email or a phone call, it's actual face-to-face -face contact. Mm -hmm. And not just the shop owners, but my other, uh, I, I, I refer to them as my colleagues, my designer mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. You know, we might interact on Facebook, but the, you just can never replace that face-to-face -face mm -hmm. contact. And it's just the, it's like the air is electric, mm -hmm. you know, because everyone's really excited about their releases. We've been working for months yes. or all year. Yeah. So um, that's really my favorite part is getting to interact. Um, you know, when you're self-employed, you don't get to interact with mm -hmm. a lot. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my husband and, and my beagle are pretty much the only interaction I get on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. So um, it's just really, it's really nice. And it's, it's also very affirming, you know, mm -hmm. when you have people come in and say, oh, I stitched such and yes. such, and I really loved it. Thanks for designing yeah. it. And, you know, it, it means a lot. And do you, um, on Sunday, do you take the time to like go look at new threads or because it kind of slows down on Sundays? It does. Sundays are, are, are a slower day. Um, and usually I would say around two o'clock in the afternoon, between one and two o'clock, I can use, I'll sneak out in little bursts and I'll leave my husband in charge uh, of the till. And I'll take, he's like, make sure you take your phone because if I need you. you I need you to come back. So, uh, you know, usually I, I'll say, all right, I'm going to do floor two. I'll quickly do floor two, check right. back in, say, can I go do floor three? Yeah. So that's usually okay. how it works. And there's never enough time. You know, I know last year I kind of felt like I was on a game on The Price is Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Because it's like, okay, good talking to you, but I got to go to the next room. So mm -hmm. I try very hard because, you know, again, that's relationships that I can build with mm -hmm. uh, fabric dyers and uh, thread dyers and, you know, all kinds of resources that allow us designers to make great designs. Yeah, and I think it's really neat that you're, you're, uh, you're using that, that silk. I'll have to kind of look into that and see what that is. I've I've had it for um, I've had it for a couple of years and I hadn't used it yet. Um, and I just was waiting for just the right design to okay. use it in. Um, a lot of my designs have like I don't want to say a lot of shading, but there's a lot of you know mm -hmm. different colors, shades of red, and mm -hmm. but. Um, it just really lent itself well to the Independence Day because mm -hmm. it was a, a limited color palette. And I don't mean to insinuate she doesn't have a lot of colors, right. but you know, sometimes you need like four different shades of something. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, and I'm actually working on one, stitching one now, again, with the Trainway selves. Okay. So I'm really excited. That'll be a release in, in the fall. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, tell everybody how they can find you on social media, what your website is. Okay, well, my website is www, isn't everything, uh, silvercreeksamplers.com. Um, I do have my entire uh, catalog of patterns listed on there. I don't sell retail. I, I like to I like to give that business to the shops mm -hmm. because it allows me more time to design and stitch, which that's my passion. I can be found on Instagram, um, Silver Creek Samplers, and I can also be found on Facebook, again, Silver Creek Samplers. Yeah, and if there's any patterns that you see of hers and you want us to carry, just put them in the comments so that I can make sure that we order it. And of course, we will have all of her nine new designs on our site. So super exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. Well, I was thrilled when I was invited to, uh, awesome. to do the interview. So thank you so much for popping in. Thanks. You're welcome.